this got to be a very uncomfortable um, interview for Miss Gail King because somewhere in the back of her head, you know, doing this interview, and uh, I'm going to shut up in a minute, but we're going to get to, I believe, 6.58 of this um, interview, which I'm going to probably rewind and let you guys hear uh, my point. Weinstein denies all of the allegations. His attorney, Donna Rotuno, is a former prosecutor, and she's handled dozens of cases defending men accused of sexual misconduct. Rotuno's comments on Me Too may surprise you. I've heard you say that you're not really a is it believer or supporter of the Me Too movement. Yeah, it's, it's more of a support. So I guess my question would be, is Gail King a supporter of the Me Too movement? Hmm. I just want to say that maybe she wasn't. Allegedly, there's videos out there with you hugged up and having a good old time with Weinstein. And if you truly supported them, maybe you wouldn't have had those videos out there. Maybe people wouldn't have been able to see the interaction of you and Weinstein. But let's move on because I want to get to 6.58. I, I think in many ways there are good things about Me Too. And, and I've said this. But what bothers me about Me Too, it, it allows the court of public opinion to take over the narrative. And when you can't come out and then either correct or challenge that narrative, it puts you in a position where you're stripped of your rights. Chicago attorney Donna Rotuno has built a reputation defending men accused of sexual assault and rape. The trial of Harvey Weinstein is her most high-profile case to date. What is your strategy in defending him? Well, the strategy in defending him, of course, is just evaluating the case for, for what it is and determining whether or not these allegations are things that we can refute and in the criminal case there are two charged victims and in both cases i feel strongly about the fact that we have evidence that is well that woman sitting in that chair got to be very uncomfortable for gail king i swear i promise you you know what's triggering in her head the 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 scene of the azrael and joy and R. Kelly it, it's sitting there back in her head. It's on her conscience. You, at this moment, she's got to be very careful of the questions that she asks so that she doesn't get the backlash of the difference of the interviews with R. Kelly as enjoy in this lady. But pay attention to 6.58. We're getting there. Favorable to us and evidence that I think will exonerate him. We know we're talking about two women. But as you know, the two story women. is so much bigger than that. Yeah. And, and I, I know you're not naive to that because we've got really more than 70 women, including, Listen. we all know, Gwyneth Paltrow, Selma Hayek, Ashley Judd, Lupita Nyong'o, who have all said that they were, that Harvey Weinstein sexually harassed them. I, I know you're saying these are... Same interview. But at what point and I want to know, was someone going to put Gail in the interviewee seat and ask her the same questions about Harvey Weinstein? Yeah, switch the role. Switch the role. Criminal cases, but these are certainly very serious allegations. How do you respond to that? And does that How do you respond to it, Gail? Well, sure. I, I think it matters. It might matter to me in my analysis. You the one hung out with him. But if I look at the criminal case, frankly, those those allegations don't matter in the context of the criminal case. But how, how does Harvey explain those allegations? Well, I don't think it's about explaining. She said, <laughs> how does Harvey explain those allegations Gail wants to know? Well, hell, you've been around him, Gail. Why didn't you ask him? Why ain't you asked him? You've been around this man for years and you ain't asked this man not one time. How do you, Harvard, my friend, explain the allegations of all of these women 
claiming that you have sexually assaulted them. Oh, never mind. Let's take pictures, Weinstein. Moving on, we got to get to 6.58. Anytime we talk about men and women and sexual circumstances, I think we have to look at the fact that there's always um, an area of gray. So there's these blurred lines, and I think sometimes one side walks away from an event feeling different than the other, and how do we reconcile that? It's not uncommon for a woman who's been through a very difficult, traumatic experience with a man to still be engaged with that man. What you say, Gail? What you say? Hold on, let's say that again. It is not uncommon to what? Very difficult, traumatic experience with a man to still be engaged with. What? Him. What you say? What you say, girl? Hold on, hold on. Hold on, y'all. Because she said that it is not uncommon. One side walks away from an event feeling different than the other. And how do we reconcile that? It's not uncommon for a woman who's been through a very difficult, traumatic experience with a man to still be engaged with Oh, oh, oh one more time, girl. Say it for the public. Because I believe all of those women that were engaged with R. Kelly it wasn't uncommon for them to still stay engaged uh, uh, with him through all of their allegedly. Uh, he hit me with a twelve force, uh, 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 twelve size Air Force, and and I and I had to poop in the bucket, and I was locked in a the, the blazer, and I was couldn't go up the street to see my uncle. That's not uncommon for all of those. Uh, dramatic women to still be engaged with him for years now is it gail let's hear that one more time one more time a woman makes that choice she makes that choice but oh then I think one more time anytime we talk about men and women and one more time because that part is funny as hell it's not uncommon what you say gail Sometimes one side walks away from an event feeling different than the other. And how do we reconcile that? It's not uncommon for a woman who's been through a very difficult, traumatic experience with a man <laughs> to engage with that man. And, and that's a choice. And that's a choice. Wait, wait, wait. What'd she say? What'd she say? She said. What'd she say? There's these blurred lines. And I think sometimes one side walks away from an event feeling different than the other. She said, and it's a choice. It's not uncommon for a woman who's been through a very difficult, traumatic experience with a man to still be engaged with that man. And, and that's a choice. And if a woman makes that choice, she makes that choice. But then I think years later to come forward and then say, and, and who knows years later if your memory is exactly the way something happened. At the time your your memory is what? But I get frustrated when I listen to these types of, of situations. Uh -huh. and I hear women uh -huh. say, well, I didn't have a choice. Well, no, I didn't, didn't have a choice. choice. Focusing on your two criminal cases. Oh, that's it, y'all. I just had to point that out to y'all because Gail wanted to switch the subject because then it came a flashback of the R. Kelly case. Because uh, when that woman said, well, you, they have a choice. You know, women always say, well, I didn't have a choice. And Gail came with that. Well, that's not too uncommon for women to be, you know, and then they still stay into that situation. What you say, Gail? Hmm. Now take that same energy that you just had and go back and do your interview uh, with R. Kelly. Let, let's do that interview over. <laughs> y'all know what? I got to go. I will see y'all later. Goodbye.